let's talk about optic heights. So there's a constant debate over how tall is too tall? Do you actually need risers? Can I just stick with absolute co-witness? Maybe lower thirds is as tall as I'll ever go, blah, blah, blah. Great. All of those points are great. And I'm here to say, frankly, it all depends. Spoiler alert to the end of the video. It all depends. It depends on you. I am not going to shoot the same way my wife would shoot, who's a whole foot shorter than me. So I'm 6'1", 6'2 on a good day, and I have a long neck, I have a tall head, and that kind of factors in. If you're a little bit shorter, if your head isn't as oblong as mine, if your neck isn't as long, then taller risers, not for you you can get away with something completely different. Me, I've tried Absolute Co-Witness, Lower Thirds, Scalar Works, Unity, GBRS. Now, I'm gonna go over a few different options. We're gonna look at pricing, all of that stuff, because if you get a riser, that's automatically more that you have to spend on it to get what fits for you on your rifle. Sucks, but it is what it is. Let's look at a couple different options and go over what the different heights are really quick. First, I'm not going to worry about just flush mount onto the rail. Not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the mounts themselves. So a lot of optics are going to come with two options right out of the box. Some of them won't, but most of them that I've seen do. It'll come with absolute co-witness, which is typically your lowest at 1.42 inches over the rail. That is not hide over bore, it's over the rail. Step up from that is lower thirds that's 1.57 typically you'll get a mount that's absolute co-witness with a spacer that takes you up to lower thirds then you had a company called scalar works come into the picture who did 1.93 height in their leap line then you had unity come in doing 2.26 scalar work now offers i actually think it's two but it's only for eotech a 2.26 riser all right, so people thought these were tall. Well, guess what? Another company came into the picture. They made the Hydras and the Lernas. The Lerna is a standalone um, riser like this. The Hydra is this. It's your mount with your laser attached in the front. This, 2.26 to the center line of the optic above the rail. This. 2.91 to the center line of the optic above the rail. If you're a shorter person, my wife for example, she actually does great with absolute co-witness. For her to get a more heads-up display, she would need to do a lower thirds. Heads-up display is like this right here. I can see my dot. I can see through my optic. If I'm shooting anything lower than this, even a scalar works, I have to drop my head like this. Okay, you see that? So heads up, drop, which is how most people shoot. I like doing this. I don't like having to do this. It's more natural, feels better. Oh, I can still do that with something tall and crazy like the Hydra. I just have less contact. Heads up, I can see through. It's actually quite comfortable. I have contact on my cheek. I'm not doing this, I'm trying to get into the gun. I'm doing this right here. So that's kind of nice. I do like these. I already have Unity because I made that decision before GBRS came out. So I can still do the same thing. I do actually just have to bring my gun up a little higher and I have to lower my head a little bit more. Still heads up. This feels better than doing an absolute co-witness or a lower thirds. Ultimately, this feels better. It, it does. So at some point, Maybe I would swap these out, but downside is cost. So they'll all be relatively similar in cost depending on what we're doing. And you know, this video, I'll actually probably just keep two red dots. If you'll notice, I also have a flip to center mount. That's the same height. So that's added cost. On one of my guns, I just have a red dot, which is great because there's actually a feature I really like about the Unity ones. That is one reason I use the Unities. They have irons built in right here. The downside to the irons in this mount, if you're using a flip to center, you can't see them when you have your magnifier flipped down, unfortunately. 
So to use those, you actually have to flip this up and you can see under it. And the height of that, I believe it appears to be lower thirds because from here to here seems closer to about half an inch. It could be lower than that, I could be wrong. I haven't actually measured it, so don't quote me on it. To get into that, this is where I have to go. I'm in on the dot, I see everything there. Now I'm on the irons. So it is kind of unfortunate. In a pinch, it's there. They're the only ones I've seen do that. Now, these are the only companies I'm talking about. I'm not talking about any other companies because I'm sure there's a plethora. Another one that I'll mention when I talk about LPVOs, probably in a separate video, is LaRue. They make a ton of mounts. I have a LaRue mount on there, but I also have a Unity mount. Ultimately, what's best for you? Well, if you're on a budget, maybe just don't get risers because they get expensive. At the time of filming this, Unity, this mount right here is $205 for this one mount. The GBRS Lerna, which is the standalone single optic mount, is $174, so it's $30 cheaper. The Scalar Works, I believe, was $169. Let's see, the Leap 01, which same footprint, with just the mount at the 193, is $159. So it's the cheapest, it's also the shortest. I am actually okay with that because I do use it as backup irons too. I don't have irons anywhere else on here. So I also have a magnifier. I can't exactly fit an iron back here. And I don't have anywhere on the front of my rail that I can fit an iron because this is kind of a shorty gun. I'm a long boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. So I extend all of my stuff up here all the way to the front. I don't have anywhere to put iron. So I actually use those as backup irons. So now, there's also the added cost of if you're going to do a magnifier, how much does that freaking cost, let alone the cost of the magnifier itself. So this flip to center is the Omni flip to center, and that by itself is $265 at the time of shooting this. I guess it would be the Leap 16 looks like the right size. So 193 for the standalone, 209 so it is cheaper. It's also lower. And then the GBRS optics or magnifier mounts, let's see, for an Omni is 274. So it actually costs more, but it's important if you're gonna do a different height that you get the riser that fits. The other reason I actually really like these options of the higher mounts, I don't flip it off to the side, I just flip it down. Um, and that is because you have extra height. There's room to be able to do that and see right over to be able to see into the optic. Now the benefit you do get to these taller optics is when you add a magnifier, it's flipping up and down instead of in and out off to the side. I never really liked magnifiers before because they flipped off to the side and it's just this thing dangling out over here somewhere. It's kind of odd. Not saying you'll get it snagged on anything, but there's more chance that you could. I, I don't really like that, just my preference. Now, the heights where you start getting the ability to actually flip up and down is Unity. Scalar works, you can't flip it up and down. It still flips off to the side, but you have to get that mount because you have to get it to the height that you need it to be. GBRS and Unity, you're good. Flips up and down. Now, there might be other options. I'm not saying there's not. Go ahead and hit me in the comments with some company I missed. Sorry. Final considerations, or I guess final point. Do you need an optic riser? No. You can get into it. You can drop that head. You lose a little bit of visibility over here but ultimately you lose a little bit of visibility. It's added movement you have to do, but all in all, if you're training, if you're practicing with what you have, you're great, you're golden. If you go that option and you need, and you wanna do a red dot or an EOTech and a magnifier, and you want it a little taller, try lower thirds. Takes you up to that 157 and most optics and most magnifiers will come with a plate that lets you add on to that mount to go over it. I know SIG offers that. I know EOTechs offer that. 
for magnifiers. The EXPS line of EOTEX is already lower thirds. The XPS line is absolute co-witness. Do what fits you. If you're 5'2 and you got normal proportioned head and neck, maybe you don't even need to worry about risers. Good for you. If you're a tall guy like me and you're just lanky and weird and you have an oblong head, risers are super helpful. So I don't care if you rag on me and tell me I'm wrong in the comments. This is what works for me. I've been shooting a really long time. All I know is I've shot all of them. I really liked this one and I invested in this one before GBRS came out. And no, I don't feel like spending a massive amount of money on GBRS mounts. I have one. I really like it. It's for a 300 blackout build. It's pretty great. And that laser being in the back, that's really nice. Gotta hand it to them. Really great design. But point is you don't need a riser. Get what fits you. And if what fits you comes in the box of your optic, great. You will probably, you will end up spending less. The, the big, bigger point is go train, go practice with what you have, spend money on ammo and go train. Stop worrying about spending around $500 on risers. If you're doing a dot in a magnifier, it's just outrageous. You don't need to do it. It might improve your performance a bit because your head is up. You're not tensing it down so much. That might be worth the investment, but ultimately you need to get better at shooting. This isn't going to make you better. It might just let you see a little bit more out of to one side. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this video didn't come across super weird because I'm a talking head with a blurry face.